Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you about what I would improve to make Apex Legends a better game. I don't want to say this game needs fixing because it launched in a fantastic state of optimization and balance, especially for a free-to-play game and especially compared to previous Battle Royale games. I also really like the game. I've been playing it a lot, obviously posting it here on the channel, and I want to continue to like this game. I want it to continue to succeed, and I want it to have legs to go on for years. My initial review is a little bit more negatively, and I begged for Respawn to prove me wrong and they immediately did, and I've never been more happy to be wrong. But I do not think that Apex Legends will have legs without some improvements. And the very first improvement I want to hit you up with has to do with the Valentine's Day event, which started yesterday. They listed some new items in the store, Valentine's Day themes, a gun skin and a regular banner for 1,100 Apex credits, or 1,100 in-game points, whatever you want to call them. The problem with this isn't that you'll be buying a gun skin for $11, but rather that you can't actually buy 1,100 credits. You can only buy 1,000 credits, or you can buy 2,150 credits for $20. So you can either spend $10 twice or spend 20 once and get more money. But no matter how you do that, if you only wanted the gun skin, you end up with more currency than you wanted. And it's generally encouraged you to just spend it on the Apex boxes. Like, that's what it's for. You're supposed to buy it and spend the extra on the little loot boxes. But this is already a bad start because it forces customers to either overspend money or to buy extra crates, which they didn't really want to spend their money on to begin with. And somebody somewhere at Respawn sat down and did an analysis and they figured that the marginal rate of return on this pricing strategy was better than the amount of people that they would turn off. And I completely disagree. Their math is probably right. And it might work today, it might work great for this Valentine's event, but in the long run, this kind of pricing strategy is going to turn players away from the game. We need to not EA up this game. This game needs to not have the standard EA price gouging thing going on with it. And I'm going to have to compare it to Fortnite, because Fortnite is still the most popular game on the planet, and they're the most popular game. One of the reasons, not just because it's free, but because their business model is very consumer friendly. Fortnite doesn't rip you off and steal your money or force you to overspend or anything. You get a lot of good stuff stuff for free. So loot boxes in this game, crafting materials, slow leveling up, marginal rewards, whatever, all that's fine by me. It's a free-to-play game and I'm expecting to pay money for cosmetics, good fun cosmetics. So the loot box and all that isn't bothersome, but if I'm going to be spending money on things, I don't want to be forced to spend money on things that I do not want. I want to be able to direct purchase the things I want and I want to be able to get a good value for my money and not just have a whole bunch of floating credits. Two other small complaints is that my free in-game credits, the orange, the orange currency, I don't have anything to do with. That's just collecting dust. And I think that you should get a guaranteed Apex pack on a win or two wins or three wins. I guess the sweaty boys would get a lot of free packs and they wouldn't spend as much. But at some number of wins, you should just get a guaranteed pack. Like two, three wins in a row, you get a pack no matter what your level is. Now that I'm done complaining about the pricing strategy, let's talk about a few things in-game that need to be tweaked. All of the legends are well-balanced and fun, except for Caustic. Caustic needs a buff or a rework or something. This dude has no mobility, which is already rough. You can already see that players prefer the high mobility legends, and Caustic has none of that, but he has no shields and no bombardment and no real offensive capabilities unlike Gibraltar. The traps that he places deal no significant damage in a fight. Like, if you're in a gunfight, the amount of DPS of those traps is very insignificant to even being shot by a pistol. And most of the time, if you stop fighting and try to throw down your traps or use your abilities mid-fight, you'll die deploying them. At best, it's an annoyance or a gas bomb. The ultimate deals no significant damage, especially outside. People just run out of it. It works okay in buildings, but then people just leave the buildings, and you really don't get a whole lot of damage off of your ultimate, especially not compared to Gibraltar or Bangalore or any of the other characters, really. It just doesn't do very much. Caustic's best ability, what he offers your team more than anything, is that he can leave traps behind you so that you always know when people are sneaking up on you. If you're just going to run and clear a building, drop a trap, and in a couple of minutes if somebody hits the trap, you'll get the notification. You can say, hey, there's a team over here behind us. We can go get them. And I think that Caustic needs a rework more than just raw gas damage because I think that's one of the reasons he's weak. I have a sneaking suspicion that in the alpha test, the gas damage was too high and Caustic was very annoying and toxic character to play, so they toned it down so that it wouldn't be annoying, but they also made it useless. So I think Caustic could use some kind of rework, something to make him more fun to play and more useful for the team. 
Speaking of fun and useful, some of the weapons also need to be rebalanced for the sake of player sanity. Most of the weapons in this game come straight out of Titanfall 1 or 2. They're unique, futuristic guns, so you have to expect a lot of unexpected stuff. You have to expect a lot of unusual performance variables that looks might not be everything, and I totally get that. I, I can't go into a game saying that I should just immediately know how everything works, and that's okay. But when you take a look at some of the weapons, like as a casual player just picking up for the first time, you look at the Mozambique, the R45, the Alternator, the Hemlock, these weapons look like they would be good. Oh, it's a shotgun pistol. Oh, it's an auto pistol. It's an SMG. Oh, it's a burst rifle. Those usually deal a lot of damage. These weapons are 100% statistically outclassed by other weapons in this game in every single meaningful category. They're... In the case of the Hemlock, every rifle in the game outperforms it. In the case of the Mozambique, it's barely better than meleeing people. The R45 and the Alternator just pale in comparison to the other SMGs, just like night and day, like totally different, not even in the same ballpark with each other. And that is not good for balance. It's especially not good for casual players that haven't put the time in to learn these sort of things. And yeah, I totally get that Battle Royale games means that some loot's not going to be good, and some weapons are going to be better than others. It's not Call of Duty, where every weapon has to be perfectly balanced, and I wouldn't really want it that way in a Battle Royale game. But there are some big rifles that don't need to be less useful than SMGs, and SMGs that are less useful than pistols, and weapons that are worse than having a melee weapon. They could use a little bit of buffing on some of these or rebalancing or some sensibility added to it so that it doesn't turn players off and confuse players. Speaking of player confusion and loot and all that, early game loot is very stingy in Apex Legends. Man, when you land in this game, you need to get a gun and you need to get a gun fast because especially now, every single drop is going to be hot. There's going to be people either landing with you or near you, so you need to expect a fight really quick. And the early game is often decided by who gets the usable guns and who finds the armor. Like, the dude that lands and picks up a Peacekeeper in a purple armor is going to beat your alternator 100% of the time, no matter how good you are, and that just, that just sucks. And that's a little bit RNG, that's a little bit Battle Royale, and I kind of get that. But sometimes you can go a very long time before you find a useful or practical weapon. All the Battle Royale games I've played, if I clear a couple cities, I'm good on loot. I'm good for any kind of engagement in combat. Such is not the case with Apex Legends. I have to loot and loot and loot and be 20 people alive. I'm still looting to get ready for a fight because I don't have enough stuff on me to fight people with. This causes too much RNG and not enough skill, especially on landings. I would rather lose to somebody because they're better than me, not just because they had one good gun and I found five of them that were useless. On this same topic, the mid-game pacing is a little bit slow. Uh, most Battle Royales are like this, especially on PC. I know the mid-game pacing isn't nearly as bad on PlayStation and Xbox, because I've played those. But Apex Legends goes like this. You land, and you fight like crazy, then there's nothing to do for 10 minutes, and then in the last zone you fight like crazy again. The last zone or two are just pure bananas. This is a little bit more specific to PC. Fortnite and uh, PUBG kind of run this way as well. In these games, a ton of people die in the beginning because they play very aggressively, and the, you kind of fight the good people at the end. However, I do think the game needs faster zones and timers. Two to three minute zones, especially for the first two, are really, really slow given how much mobility are, there is in this game. A lot of the characters have ability moves. Like you look at Pathfinder has a ridiculous amount of mobility. He can traverse the map insanely quickly. There's zip lines, there's balloons that launch you, climbing. It's not like PUBG where you can get stuck and you just hard die to the blue because you can't handle it. This game you can get anywhere really, really quickly. I mean, we did the Nessie challenge the other day, which required us to go to 10 different locations out of order and we still got it done. So the mobility is there to support faster zones. And I get that you don't want to punish players, you want to give them a little time to loot and stuff, but mid-game's a little bit boring. And finally, my last little complaint, my last recommended fix on this one, is something that's very personal to me. And it's something that I think that most of you are going to disagree with. And you're going to just tell me I'm straight up 100% wrong, and if you feel that way, by all means, put it in the comments section, I'm going to read all of those. The personal gripe I have with Apex Legends is the same one that I have with Blackout and the same one I had with old PUBG before they redid the sound balance. And that's that realistic noise levels are not comfortable gameplay for most players. The sound and footsteps are really good in Apex Legends. I can hear exactly where people are coming from, I can hear what direction they're in, and I can even tell what characters they are sometimes. If my Astros are on 100% volume, if I have my headsets turned up super incredibly loud to where if I took them off my head and walked across the room I could still hear the game going on, I can hear everything great. 
The downside of this is that when I shoot my gun or reload or jump off a balloon with rockets on my feet, it causes deafness. It blows out my ears and my ears ring for three hours. I, I don't want to have to choose to go deaf in order to hear footsteps. And I do get that this is more unique to me. I went to a doctor about it and yes, I have medically more sensitive ears than most people. So I, I understand that many of you will disagree with me, but I've talked to other gamers and other gamers are in agreement that not only in Apex Legends, but in other Battle Royale games, they don't want to have to play at 100% volume because it's not always comfortable. And realism isn't always fun. We've already got robots and stuff. We could probably do a better job balancing this either louder gunshots on your end, like your gun sounds less loud to you, or louder footsteps, or something of a balance, because people just roll up on you, re at least me anyway, because I don't have my volume high, they roll up on you and you have no idea they're coming whatsoever. That's why Wraith is so popular, because you know when you're being looked at. Guys, that is all for this video. I hope that somebody at Respawn sees it and hears it. I hope we get some changes in the game. These aren't even really that major changes. The game will probably survive without them, except for the pricing. The pricing one is rough. The pricing one needs some work. If you guys did enjoy this video, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.